Welcome to January's LeetCode Challenge. Today's problem is minimum operations to reduce x to zero. You are given an integer array nums and an integer x. In one operation, you can either remove the leftmost or the rightmost element for the array nums and subtract its value from x. Note that this modifies the array for future operations. All that means is it pops off the left or the right. So return the minimum number of operations required to reduce x to exactly 0. If it's possible, um, or if it's not possible, uh, return negative 1. OK, so we have an array, and we want to uh, commit, do some operations where we can either pop off the left or the right. And we want to find the minimum number of operations we can do to uh, get 5. Here, the answer is going to be 2, because we pop off these two. That's going to be the minimum number to require us to get to 0 from here. So minus 3, then minus 2, that equals 0, right? OK, so um, very first thought might be to go re do something recursively. But uh, let's stay away from that, because um, that's going to be ex exponential times. Surely there's some sort of greedy algorithm that we can use to do this in O of n time complexity. So they give you a hint to think in reverse. Instead of finding the minimum prefix and suffix, can we find the maximum subarray? What does that mean? Um, well, basically, let's say that, for instance, uh, we had the number 6 instead, right? Uh, we know we're going to pop up these two and then pop up this, this one. And all that's going to be left is this, right? Instead of thinking about what to pop off on the right and left, what if we try to find the maximum subarray, contiguous subarray that is, that equals the sum of the entire array minus whatever value we're trying to find. So here, if we add all these together, it would be, let's see, 7, 9, 10, 11. 11 minus 6 is going to equal 5. And we want to find the maximum contiguous subarray that's going to equal 5. And here we see that 1 of 4 is the maximum contiguous subarray, right? If we do that, you can see the answer is right here. It's these three elements. So all we need to do is get the length of our contiguous subarray and subtract that from the length of the entire array. That way, we are fairly certain we can do something recursive. Or, I'm sorry, we can do something uh, with a greedy approach instead of doing like some recursive cues and things like that. So to do that, um, we could start off by creating some sort of DP structure uh, where we're going to store the accumulation of every single um, number from the left to the right. So here we'll go like 1, 2, 6, 8, 11, right? And what does this do? Well, if we had like a hash map, let's say, that stored the index numbers of each one of these values, we could start off like here and say, all right, well, if we popped off like this number here, do we have a number that we could um, go up till that's going to equal, well, let me see here. Um, it's going to equal, I think it's 6, right? So um, here we'd have to, oh, no, it's not 6, it's 5, right? So what we would do is say, okay, subtract the number we're at right now uh, from the number that we need, which is 6. Um, I'm sorry, which is 5. Uh, okay, <laughs> so this is getting a little confusing to explain, um, but let's just think about this carefully. Um, if we had the left value, what we need to find is the right value that's going to subtract, and then this should equal the number that we calculated before, which is um, the sum minus x, right? And that's going to equal 5. So that would mean to get the uh, right value, we would have to add, just add the 2, add r that value equal to l that value plus uh, sum minus x here, that would be 5, right? And yeah, so uh, what we're trying to do is then say 5 plus uh, this value here, 1, so that's 6. Do we have a 6 inside of our hash? And we do right here at this second index number. So then all we need to do is say, OK, subtract our index number that we're at right now um, from whatever index value this number exists at. So there it would be 2, right? And in indeed, the answer is 2, because it's these two that's going to equal the opposite amount that we're trying to get. Now, one thing to note is we might actually want to include this index number here. So 
uh, what we'd have to do is kind of add a number, another number, zero, just to account for that. Uh, otherwise, we would always skip this first number. We always subtract that, right? And we want to find every contiguous subarray that we could possibly do here. All right, so hopefully that kind of explains the approach. Let's think about how we would do this. First thing to do is create this accumulation array, right? And so what I think I'll do is just initialize a DP array, call that just an empty list, and we will start um, creating the accumulation number. I'll uh, we'll start off with zero. And here we'll add zero here uh, to account for that, for the, you know, zero index, like no index that we're counting in this number here. So <clears throat> for n in nums, what are we going to do? We're going to add to our z plus equal n, and then we're just going to append this to the dp array, append z. So now we should have this accumulation array, and uh, now we want to create some sort of lookup hash, right? Because every time we do this, the point is to get the the max length, so we will need the index numbers, and we don't want to have to like look through each one of these of this array. We can just do it in hash here. So what we'll do is say mm, for index value in enumerate DP, we are going to say the value uh, and store the index number as the key. Okay, so now we have our lookup. Now what do we do? Well, first let's calculate that reverse value because we're not no longer looking for x we'll be looking for y right so that's going to equal to y is equal to the sum of nums um, minus x is that correct i believe that's correct <clears throat> okay so for let's see uh we, we're gonna have to go through our our accumulation array so for uh, what can we do? Do we need the index value? Yeah, I guess we do. Um, so I'm going to call this L index and, oh wait, no, no, it's L value and L index in lookup.items. Um, what we want to do is find if the l dot value plus y is in our lookup and if it is then we are going to um, calculate the length of the subarray and then store that as the max so i should have an answer here with that ants uh, we'll start with negative one assuming that it doesn't exist and we'll say all right so if it exists then store the max y equal i'm sorry answer equals the max of let's see look up l dot value plus y this is going to give us the right index and we want to subtract that from the l dot index uh, otherwise if that is smaller then we just keep our regular answer here and that should store the max length of our contiguous subarray. So once that's finished, now we just want to return the length of nums subtracted by the value here that we answer. Because we don't want to re return the maximum subarray. What we're trying to do is find the minimum number of uh, operations needed to get to that, right? So that's going to be the opposite. We're going to subtract that from the length. Like whatever this length is, we'll subtract that from the entire length here. Um, there's one thing to note though. If it is equal to negative one. Uh, we don't want to return a length that's greater than the array, right? So we'll have to say if, look, if ants is still equal to negative one, then just return ants. Uh, otherwise, return this. Now, I'm not entirely sure if I got everything here, so uh, let's see if this worked. And looks like it worked. Let's submit that. Accepted. Great. So Time complexity-wise, this is O of n, and space complexity, because of our hash, we have also O of n. And that would be it. Um, not too bad, but definitely it kind of tries to confuse you by making you go some different directions. So hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.